Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg. And guess what? I have one of the fastest modern day production cars right next to me. What is it? It is that car. This is a 2022 Porsche 911 Turbo. But before we get into this blacked out drop top of the mighty 911, let's talk about what's going on here. Back in 1976, that is where you can trace the lineage of the 911 Turbo. It came to be produced in 1976 for the first time. Now, the name that Porsche called it was the 930. When you heard 930, you knew that that was a 911 Turbo. And the original 911 Turbos, those were the ones that were given the name, or I should say earned the name Widowmaker because they were single turbocharged flat six engines and the boost came in well through the rev range. We're talking like 5,000 RPM and it hit very hard to where if you backed out, especially in mid corner, that tail was coming around and you were going to be wishing that you weren't sitting behind the wheel of the car at that time. Now, fast forward over the years, the 911 Turbo has stayed in the lineup and it has truly evolved with the whole 911 family. Now, 992 is the chassis code of this 911. That first came out in 2020, right before the pandemic, 992 chassis. When you see Turbo today, you're still gonna get the utmost in performance, but another thing you're gonna get is all wheel drive supremacy, something that other 911s for many generations never had. So what I wanna find out is, if you're looking for a supercar killing 911, but you wanna let your hair blow in the wind, do you go 911 Turbo or do you go McLaren? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this Porsche 911 Turbo and find out. Right off the bat, the style. It's such a familiar shape. You cannot confuse this with any other car. And I think one of the downsides to the 911 Turbo is to the untrained eye, it does look a lot like a regular 911. But let me show you some of the specifics. So up front, you're gonna notice that great style of headlight design, and I love the way they do the interior lighting. A Little bit of silver trim, nothing too crazy, but very classy on our blacked out drop top. Working our way down, you are gonna get LED turn signals and lighting. And then you have massive corner air intakes that actually extend all the way into the center. So on a normal 911 Carrera, this is actually blocked off, it's fake. But on the 911 Turbo and Turbo S, it is full functional. We do have a forward facing camera and this particular 911 Turbo is equipped with the front axle lift which remember, you could save up to a thousand different locations GPS wise, where it'll automatically lift. So let's say you have a high curb at your home. You drive up, it'll automatically lift for you. But that's an easy way to tell is the way that this front end is structured and the fact that you have the functionality in the center, that means that this is a 911 Turbo. Now, as we rise up, you got that Porsche crest and it's basically flanked by these two flat black stripes on the front mounted trunk. I'm not a big fan of it. It really doesn't do anything for me. Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section if you like the flat black stripes. And if you can't see them, my advice is open up your eyes or maybe sit closer to the screen, whether it's your phone, laptop, TV, desktop, whatever you're watching Rady's Rides on right now, but there are two stripes right there, I promise you. Now, as we come around the bend, you're gonna notice some turbo-specific wheels. So on your standard turbo, you're gonna get 20-inch wheels up front, 21-inch wheels out back. Machine aluminum, gunmetal gray. We do have our Brembo six-piston calipers with the Porsche name and that almost as bright red as Ronald McDonald's hair and what's interesting is that these calipers are basically the size of his freaking head. That's how big they are. Rotors are over 15 inches in diameter, two-piece, cross-drilled, of course, fully ventilated. 
That's gonna help with braking capability. You have PASM, which is that adaptive suspension system from Porsche, all four corners. And then this one, like I said, a turbo or turbo S has all wheel drive. Rear wheel drive base, and it sends power to the front wheels. Obviously when it detects slip and all that kind of stuff to give you the maximum grip, 255 on the tire width up front and a 35 series sidewall. Now coming down the side, I love how clean everything is. The McLarens, like the 720, they look a little funky to me. It, it, there's something about it. It's like a love-hate relationship I have with McLarens, especially the style. This is so clean, so timeless that it'll still look good 100 years from now. So you're gonna have, of course, your gloss black of the mirror caps. We have our 360 degree cameras and we have painted black all around the, fin uh, the window frame, windshield frame. Of course, we got the top back and you'll notice that we had those massive flared fenders. Now on the 911 Turbo, you have a specific side skirt extension. This is specific to the Turbo and then these fender air intakes are for that flat six twin turbocharged engine. Love the way they look, especially when you're going down the road and you look in the side mirror, they look downright sexy. Now out back, like I said, you have a 21 inch wheel, so a little bit larger in diameter. Tires are 315s. So you have basically steamrollers out back. Of course, we have electronic limited slip diffs to get the power to the ground. But boy, oh boy, that flared fender with this wheel in it. I mean, it just, I don't know, this is the combo. Let me know how you feel about the wheel style on this turbo. Now, when you get to the backside, you'll notice that the racing stripes actually go onto our claw top. I have the top down. You can see the cloth with the stripes. I'm not really digging it personally, but let me know in the comment section. I would prefer for this to have more of a speedster look. So if you know your 911 history, you would know in the 1980s, they came out with a Speedster and it actually had a tonneau cover and you didn't see the claw top. I would prefer that over this. I don't wanna see the claw top, but I, what I do love seeing is that massive rear spoiler that is active. So you could actually, when you get up to speed, this will rise up on these two ginormous pedestals to give us extra downforce. And then of course we have all that air also rushing into the engine compartment through the rear vent as well. Vertical slots with a little bit of shiny silver. And then I like the way this one is spec. They blacked out the Porsche name, 911 Turbo. We got the clear tail light uh, lights that go all the way across. And then working our way all the way down, you're gonna have that oval shaped exhaust, nice wide opening, and then we have functional arrow on the corners as well. So to me, even this back Porsche, I mean, look at this. On a 911 Carrera, this is like blocked off. This, look, my hand goes all the way up in there. So it gives you that nice functionality of everything flowing perfectly from front to back. Remember, on the original 911 Turbo, they used to call it the tea tray. You know how like if you're in England and you want a cup of tea, you get your little tray, you have your sugar and everything. That's what the wing used to look like. So even though this is a pretty big wing, the original wings were even larger, but that's what they call them, the tea tray wing. It's a little bit of Jeopardy information from me to you. But while we go ahead, let's see if I can open this up and show you anything with the twin turbocharged power plant. All right, guys, time to not see the engine because on pretty much every modern day 911, you can't see that flat six engine that sits past the rear axle. But I want to do show you that we have the top up because to even show you what we can show you, you have to put the top up. There's the racing stripes on top of the roof there. And this does have a solid glass rear window as to be expected on a car of this pedigree. Very interesting way we have to open this up to show you the cooling fans. So this all rises up and then you'll see we have our two cooling fans and the turbo badge, but it's what's underneath all that that really makes this car do what it does. We have a 3.8 liter. So standard Carrera is a three liter. This is a 3.8 liter twin turbo flat six, 572 horsepower, 
553 pound-feet of torque, it will do zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds, top speed 200 miles per hour. The vehicle weighs 3,790 pounds, MPGs around 15 in the city, 20 on the highway, and remember, we have all-wheel drive performance. So very interesting to compare this to a McLaren, compare it to a convertible Z06 Corvette, when you look at the performance and what those numbers are really all about. But while we go ahead, let's fire this thing up and see how it launches. All right, guys, we're inside this drop top 911 Turbo Cabriolet. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've always been a fan of the 911 Turbo, but I do like me a McLaren, and I can't argue with the price of a Z06 Corvette convertible. How much is this one? Now, this particular one has a ton of options. So you're looking at a price of $239,000. Let's see how it stacks up to the door panels. I love the deviated stitching, the leather material throughout, the nice silver trim, no gloss black, even the center of the door panel. Look at how they did the diagonal stitching. The quality just pours all over that door panel. We have the Bose sound system. And then you have a door pocket up front for your five pound bag of Skittles. And then of course the required Norschleife Nurburgring Twinkie holder that will hold five track day Twinkies. Now going from the door panel to the dash, love the real aluminum trim, the stitching, the leather. You have your 10.9 inch infotainment system, but we also have the sport chrono clock with the silver gray background to the timepiece. I like the way they did that. And then of course, like I said, full navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all wireless, and we have the ability to change all our different drive modes, suspension, the whole shabam, even expand your spoilers, which, because remember, we have the spoiler in the back, but we also have the spoiler in the front as well. Now, working our way down, you do have your toggle switches. We could turn on the sport exhaust. That's your axle lift system. Dual climate control, very easy to figure out. This little guy, it looks like some type of electric razor. It's not. This is a eight-speed PDK transmission, which was all new for the 992 chassis. You got the 911 name. We got our controls for our drop top. Three stages of ventilated seats, three stages of heated seats, more aluminum trim. Here's our key fob. Almost looks like a Porsche 911. And then, of course, we have more leather. Open this up. You got a place, I would say, for five packs of candy cigarettes, two USB-Cs, and then you're gonna get the 18-way adjustable sports seats, the turbo embossed in the headrest, nice stitching, bolstering, all full power assist, of course, for the passenger and the driver, and this does give you a rear seat. The only challenge is it's very, very small, very tight back there. You're not gonna get me back there because I feel like I'm gonna break my back and never be able to get out. But what I want you to do is, I don't want you to get in the back seat. I want you to come over here because I want to show you behind the wheel in this 911 Turbo. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. You do get a total of three memory seat settings. Love the aluminum 911 Turbo sill plate. And then the pedal box is right out of a 911 red race car. Nice large dead pedal, brake, and throttle with aluminum. You have your seat controls that are easy to get to. And then the seats. This is the perfect balance. Yes, you could get those carbon fiber bucket seats. I think in this type of car, it just wouldn't work right. These are comfy and they hold you in fairly well. Steering wheel, love the leather all the way around. Nice, small, round steering wheel. You got your drive mode selector switch, hollowed out spokes and that Porsche crest. And then of course we have our metal, not plastic, metal paddles for the eight-speed PDK. You do have the extended leather on the actual steering column and this is a power tilting 
telescoping steering wheel, and then you got that great gauge setup. Analog tack with the silver background, and then you have the digital gauges flanking it. Love the shape. And then of course, all the stitching everywhere. Not gonna show you underneath the trunk, the front mounted trunk. It's an opening where you could put bags, two carry-ons. What I wanna do is, if you're ready, let's go on throttle in this 911 Turbo. All right, guys, we're inside this 911 Turbo. I have it in Sport Plus mode, which automatically activates the rear arrow and the front arrow. I'm gonna start off with the PDK shifting for me. It does a damn good job, and I'm gonna be able to use some launch control. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Left foot on the brake, right foot down. On throttle! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh! Jeez Louise! I'm telling you right now, this thing hits hard! And this isn't even a Turbo S! Turbo S even has more power! But boy oh boy, that launch control, 5500 RPM, all-wheel drive, gripping us to the ground! I tell you, I think I almost changed the way the earth revolves because the grip was just so intense, so intense. Everything is so well laid out in here. The highest level of fit and finish, especially this one with the higher options. I'm going to hit M by the shifter. Now I could use those metal paddles that are behind the wheel to go through that PDK transmission. But are you ready? Because I'm definitely ready. On throttle, here we go! Golly. <laughs> this is just another one of those driving experiences where you're just, your brain freaking melts. My frontal lobe is just melted because it has no idea how a car like this can accelerate the way that it does and the fact that you can enjoy open air experience but yet have this lethal cruise missile it boggles the mind and everything that you know about logic and judgment in this world the bdk shifts with such ferocity are you ready i'm freaking ready i hope so on throttle here we go yeah nice on the brakes. Look at this, look at this. Woo! Oh, the balance, the balance of this car. And that's not normal because a convertible back in the day used to have so much flex. It used to be like a freaking rubber band or a whammo frisbee that had so much flex. Now it's so rock solid where you're not losing anything but between a coupe and a convertible. That's how crazy things are today. But the, the sound, the, the rush of the turbo boost from the turbo spooling up, it's, it's downright ridiculous. On throttle, here we go! The input to the steering wheel. my beating heart because I'm telling you right now this experience it's like you may look at the Corvette Z06 convertible and say Joe you're out of your effing mind why would I go Porsche when I could go get a Z06 and I can't fault you for that trust me but until you get into one of these and experience it for yourself I'm just scratching the surface trying to express how mind-blowing this effing 911 Turbo is. And yes, that's the official term, effing 911 Turbo. It's crazy. It's just simply insane. You ready? On 
Front throttle, here we go. I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm crying tears of joy. I'm definitely not sweating because I got the top down. It's a beautiful, cool day. But boy, am I crying tears of joy, man. Stops on a dime, look at that. Boop. Give everybody change. Holds the line so well. So well. It's just crazy what this car does to you. It's that freaking good. It's that freaking good. But I hate to say it, damn it. We gotta get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete and wrap this one up. Man, I don't want to. I can't yet, I can't. Let me make a quick U-turn. Let me make a quick U-turn here. On throttle! That U-turn was worth it. But we gotta get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Beats <laughs> and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another time warp kind of day because that's what this car does. It basically puts you in a time warp situation with how hard it accelerates. Definitely wanna thank Miro and the rest of the crew at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete for getting us access to this 911 Turbo convertible let me know what you think are you going to go mclaren 720 are you going to go corvette z06 or are you going to go the 911 way let me know down in that comment section but if you're new to the channel you're on your way out hit that subscribe button i promise you it's worthwhile come back for more if you are a subscriber thank you for being part of the raised rights family of course none of this would be possible and i i try not to tell him too much because i don't want his ego and his muscles to get too big but none of this would be possible if it wasn't for stephen flood Stephen Flood Photography. Follow him on Instagram. Supposedly, he's going to start putting some pictures of his biceps as he's been working out and doing his training regimen to really just kind of flex his muscle. So show him some love in the comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you're doing. Just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.